It's been busy, yes. Real mix of people, dealers, industry people, end users. So yeah, we're um, we're going to really a bit of a debrief at the end of the day and try and find out, you know, what type of customers have been coming onto the stand. It's just a huge piece. Um, we have um, senior leadership in the US focus purely just on sustainability. Um, we publish our own sustainability action plan that we're looking to do as a company. Um, and it spreads right across the globe in all of our operations and all of our facilities. So locally here in the UK, there's been big investments. So we've just been renewing the paint plant uh, back at the Hater factory. And again, that's to try and be more sustainable about what sort of resources are we using um, and can we use more sustainable methods of doing things. But it goes through the manufacturing and then also into everything else we do. So actually you've got on the tables here, we haven't bought any brochures. So these have got QR, these got QR codes, scan them to get the digital brochures. So again, trying to reduce paper, print, all those sort of things. There's a lot of ways we're trying to adjust as we can. Customers want access to things, but then once they've looked at, you know, depending on who it is, once they've looked at the brochure once, what happens to it? Does it go in the bin? Is it recycled? It's really, really hard to know. When with our brochures in the past anyway, the contract we had with the printers, the printers would come and collect any unused brochures from us anyway and take them out and, and uh, recycle them. And then we started looking at what we were using in brochures as well. So the old hater brochure, so this nice gold sort of leaf across it, but it makes it very difficult to recycle. So we moved away from that. So we were changing some of the ways we were designing the brochures to make it more sustainable. Lots of organisations that are using our existing petrol products are asking for it. People like the National Trust, Commonwealth Wargraves, you know, the guy that came to fit my kitchen a couple of years ago, everything was battery. Even the saws he was using to chop the worktops up all ran off of batteries. So other industries have gone there that you could say are slightly similar. There can be indoors or outdoors, but I think it will be um, large organisations, stately homes, places like that, that will go first. It's the people that are under the spotlight with sustainability to move away from fossil fuels that will adopt it quicker both globally as a company and then locally. So locally, we, we try to run a lot of sort of social events, um, either outside of that or we will run them during the time. So we will do a mid-year uh, employee day where we will shut the factory at lunchtime. Everyone's paid all day, but we will close the factory and then we will do stuff in our test field. We'll have barbecues and a bar and activities and that sort of thing and similar sort of thing at Christmas, as well as small events throughout the year. But globally as a company, we have loads of resources on our internal intranet. Um, employees get free access to the car map. So for, again, for mental health, so they can get resources for um, helping them with mental health or anxiety. So there's a lot of stuff globally that we're trying to do as a company to support people because it's important. People are your greatest resource. And, and I always look outside of our industry. You know, if you think in sport, <clears throat> you know, they will strategically put in rest and recovery into players to get the best out of them at the weekend and you know it's the same sort of thing with with employees if you've got happy employees and rest for employees you know I will quite actively and I did it I went on holiday phone and laptop left at home and I didn't touch it for a whole week because it's important for, for myself for my family and I encourage my team to do the same thing is that I don't want to bother if you're on holiday go and rest you know and then we get the most out of people when they're in in work mode right I think it's a huge thing for me and again Going back, this is your background. absolutely. But going back to what I was, I always look at the journeys I go through when I'm going through anything myself outside of our industry, when I'm buying things, and I then try to think how can we then embrace what other industries have done into our industry, and then I try to share that with dealers. So there's a lot of things that I want to do, you know, be it training, giving resources, marketing material, point of sale. How can we enhance that customer journey? That when the customer comes in, you know, it's the sort of thing where they. It is a distress purchase, nobody wants to buy a lawnmower, it's the same as buying a washing machine. But when they come in they go, actually that was an enjoyable and I think we need to move forward as an industry and move away from embracing people coming in. I was talking to somebody only earlier about it and I remember a story of a, when I was a dealer and a, a customer coming in with a chainsaw and it was B&Q own brand with a chain on the backwards. Kick him out the door no, no. A, I turned. I showed him how to put the chain on, and I sold him some chain oil and some two-stroke oil. So I turned it into a sale, and then I and then I explained to him that if it had come to me, I'd have shown him how to put it together, and I'd have assembled it for him. So I think we've got to embrace those customers. It's hard to get people through the door. So once they're through them, how do I turn that person into a customer? Maybe they didn't know I was there as a dealer. You know, maybe they've never been past the place before. So it's important that we do that. So it's something I try to encourage our dealers to do all the time. And then what can I bring as a, as a manufacturer to them to support it?